it still surprises me how many people still use melatonin supplements when they come home after a late night out, say 1, 2 a.m., and they want something to help them fall asleep, this is exactly when you should not use melatonin. What's up guys, my name is Lucas, and today I'm super excited to be exploring a very novel alternative to melatonin supplements. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, and my mission is to bring you guys the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please like this video, hit that subscribe button below. And if you have any questions or comments throughout this video, please leave them below as I do aim to respond to each and every single one. So today's discussion is all around a novel melatonin alternative known as agomelatine. Specifically, what I'm gonna do is explore some of the features of this synthetic analog of melatonin and also give you guys a bit of a background into melatonin, the hormone itself and some of its crucial functions. First of all, we need to understand what is melatonin? Well, melatonin is a hormone that all humans produce and it is actually produced in the pineal gland in the brain. Production of melatonin actually starts with the beginning substrate L-tryptophan, which is abundant in turkey, walnuts, and other lean meats, which is then converted via a several step pathway towards serotonin, and then eventually into melatonin in different parts of the brain. Some of this serotonin that is produced makes its way to the pineal gland, where it is then converted into melatonin in a cyclic light dependent process. So guys, bear in mind, melatonin is best uh, strengthened or produced by dark environments. And specifically, remember, we need to be avoiding all spectrums of light, not just blue light, as synthetic light can significantly hinder the body's production of melatonin. So here are some quick facts about melatonin. Did you know that the gut has 100 times more melatonin receptors than the blood? And the gut also has 400 times more receptors than the brain. Melatonin can also modulate the gut microbiome. It has also been shown in my studies to prevent obesity when used exogenously. So it just goes to show you how important a good night's sleep is for regulating body composition, muscle growth, and fat loss. The other point that I want to emphasize is that strong melatonin production is linked to longer lifespan and health span. And that is because melatonin is now being used as a complementary therapy add-on to treat various forms of cancer, which goes to show you how powerful melatonin is as an antioxidant. So I really want to emphasize when it is important not to use melatonin supplements. The key point to understand here is you do not use melatonin like you would with a typical sedative or an anxiolytic. The reason being is that Let's say, for example, you go out and you stay up late to like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and you come back home and you know that you're gonna to struggle to fall asleep. That is not when you use melatonin because basically melatonin is a regulator of the circadian rhythm. And by doing so, you're gonna be reinforcing the fact that this is now your new desired sleep time. So the following day, it'll be much harder to fall asleep at your desired, say, 9.30 p.m. or 10 p.m. So this is crucial that we don't use melatonin, you know, following a late night out or as a typical sedative. Instead, look for other alternatives as I've covered others on my channel here before. That's an absolute key point to emphasize. And in fact, melatonin supplements, in my opinion, are probably best utilized following circadian rhythm disruption, such as for counteracting jet lag and or changing time zones. So now we get stuck into the melatonin alternative known as agomelatine. So agomelatine is a synthetic naphthalene analog of melatonin. It's important to note that this particular drug is an agonist of the melatonergic MT1 and MT2 receptors. Bear in mind, we have different types of melatonin receptors across the body. 
and agomelatine binds to and activates MT1 and MT2 receptors. But the key point here is that it has a longer half-life compared to regular melatonin. And in addition, it also has a stronger affinity, which means a stronger attraction towards these receptors. So here is the crucial point to understand the agomelatine advantages. So in animal studies, both melatonin and agomelatine demonstrate antidepressant-like activity, but only agomelatine exhibits this property when administered to rats in the morning. One of the most important pharmacological properties of agomelatine is its pro-chronobiological effect, which means that it does an excellent job at accelerating the resynchronization of our circadian rhythm. So it can help to reshift our circadian rhythm back towards our target um, time zone. So that's a really key point to understand is that agomelatine can be used in the morning to strengthen our sleep th that night. So I found that very interesting and also highly applicable to those who don't respond well to melatonin, such as myself who notice grogginess, fatigue, worsened anhedonia and mood when using melatonin. How does agomelatine work? This is crucial to understand that agomelatine is an antagonist, which means it blocks the activity of the 5-HT2C receptor. So it's the serotonin 2C receptor. And by doing so, when we block the 5-HT2C receptor, this leads to an increase in frontocortical dopamine and noradrenaline production, which is often compromised in depressive states. So although agomelatine does block this receptor and people may think, oh, this is bad because it's blocking a serotonin receptor. That's not necessarily true. When we block this particular receptor, it actually demonstrates antidepressant-like effects. And this is clearly noted not only with this drug, but also other 5-HT2C antagonists. So that's a key point to really drive home. The other unique property of agomelatine is that it destroys anxiety. And it does this again through that 5-HT2C receptor. So they found that mice that had genetically lacking 5-HT2 receptors showed reduced exploratory anxiety. By this way, we can see the antagonism of the 5-HT2 receptors induced by agomelatine, especially in the frontal cortex, may be associated with anxiolytic properties. And through blockade of these 5-HT2 receptors, agomelatine may also enhance extracellular levels of noradrenaline, therefore increasing the anxiolytic response. And guys, this is often noted um, amongst many biohackers and anti-aging enthusiasts. When they use agomelatine, they see a reduction in anxiety, an improvement in mood and stability. So. That's a core feature of agomelatine that separates it from regular uh, melatonin. In terms of a dosage, again, this is not medical advice, but we see dosage ranges between 25 to 50 milligrams per day. And some people notice benefits when they use it in the morning as they get that antidepressant-like effect plus an improvement in sleep that night. It's also been shown to increase REM sleep as well. So this compound is uh, scheduled in some countries, although I will be leaving a link to a vendor so you can purchase agomelatine in the video description below. But guys, that pretty much wraps up today's video. Just remember, biohacking is an art. It's all about knowing when to use compounds, how to use them, and being very strategic with your um, tools and protocols. So guys, Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out all the amazing links in my video description. Check out all of my other social media channels. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.